Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Mobile Application Tester. We are in chapter one talking about the mobile world and continuing ahead with the next segment of this introduction, which is 1.6, creating a test strategy for mobile apps. As a part of this particular segment, we'll be exploring more about that, how exactly the test strategy is different when it comes to mobile application testing. Of course, we do a lot, a lot about the foundation level stuff that what exactly takes you to create a strategy, what kind of different approaches do we have, but does it mean that when it comes to mobile application, it has a different interface altogether and there are different types of considerations and factors to be taken into account when it comes to creating a strategy specific for mobile applications? And yes, the answer is yes. And what are we talking about here is to get started with what exactly the type of typical risk which you can actually target into account. So number one thing here is creating a test strategy for the mobile devices requires the tester to take into account all the parameters listed so far in this chapter. So it's just not about one particular thing which comes up all of a sudden. You talk about the type of devices, the type of mobile app, what sort of architecture you're going to follow. And at the same time, of course, different connectivity needs, the bandwidth and lot many other hardware and software resources. And again, it's not limited to what we have discussed so far. There will be a lot many things which will be elaborated in the coming chapters, which will add more value to your understanding on these factors and parameters. When it comes to the typical risk, which we can actually include on a very high level, that is without knowing the device proliferation data in a particular geographical location, one cannot choose the device on which the app needs to be tested in a sustainable fashion which simply means where we talk about the proliferation data, it means that what type of devices is growing and which particular geographic reason. Because if you are not aware of those devices, you may be testing on the unwanted devices which may not be used by your end audience. So having that information can definitely give you a great grip on what sort of devices can be filtered and used for testing. Again, without knowing the type of business model, one cannot test whether the application behavior is a good fit for that business model or not. And again, business model brings to you that understanding that where exactly is going to fit, what kind of target audience are going to work. Again, we have discussed this in our previous tutorials. You can have a quick look on that. Now, we are talking about the risk of the strategy to be considered, not from the mobile application as a product. So right now we're talking about the risk to be considered for the strategy. So again, don't have an intuition that, is that all we can talk about the risk? Now, of course, there are, again, a big list of risks which, uh, which comes into discussion when we talk about the mobile applications. But this is about the test strategy when we create one for the mobile application testing. Also to add, while creating the test strategy for mobile application testing, additionally, it needs to consider the following specific risk and challenges, which you can see now in detail. For example, the variety of mobile devices with device specific defects on some of them. Of course, there are specific things which are provided by the vendor itself. Like for example, you may have XYZ organizations creating mobiles for you and again, you may need to be aware of that what kind of typical issues they generally have and which can impact or may not impact your app on that particular device. The availability of device in-house or via the use of external test labs. Can you really afford having some of these devices with you in order to do the real-time testing? Or there is also a possibility of having the test labs which can provide you all the configurations and devices which you can actually make use of. The introduction of new technology, devices, and or platform during the application lifecycle. Again, your mobile application can be built for an year and that end of the year, you may realize that by the time you started the project, you had only these devices. But when you completed, you had really got new devices being introduced into the market and people are heavily moving into that. Now that again brings you something being outdated. So you need to take care of such things that if there are new devices being introduced during the span of your project, will you be considering those new models to be considered in your testing? If yes, how? The installation and upgrade of the app itself via various channels, including 
preserving app data and preferences. Again, we will be talking in details about this information in upcoming tutorials and upcoming chapters where we need to talk about that when somebody tries to uninstall the app or move into the upgrade, then generally the data has to be restored or it has to be secured so that when they upgrade the data still appears or else it can be lost just due to an upgrade happening on the mobile device on the other hand platform issues which might impact the application you may have issues and known bugs from the platform itself like ios android and windows Network coverage and its impact on the app is global context. At any point of time, people will be traveling and using your app and they may have fluctuations in their internet connectivity and that really needs uh, you know, to be tested when it comes to the mobile apps again. The ability to test using the network of various service providers as well, that is again in consideration because not everyone is having appropriate coverage in all those areas of a particular city or a country. The use of mobile emulators, simulators, and or real devices for specific test levels and type of test. Again, as we know that, you know, affording a real device of all the companies and all the models of that particular phone can really not be affordable. It could be expensive. So you need to decide what type of testing you can use and what type of testing you can conduct with help of simulators and emulators. And then the later one, the remaining ones could be conducted on the real devices. So cutting your cost, setting up your budget, and defining the schedule of all these execution must be considered as again a challenge uh, in order to create your test strategy altogether. Further adding the information here, this test strategy takes risk and challenges into account to add more value into it. That is the test strategy may specify the use of mobile simulator or emulator in early stages of development, which clearly says that it's not something which I can really start with a real device, buying you know 20 pieces of different devices and telling testers, okay, this is your initial phase, install the APK file and start testing it. No, that's not required at all. As far as the application is built, it is, can be published into an app store or play store. You can download that, install it and check in the real device. But for the initial testing, when you talk about the unit integration and several other components being tested, you can certainly make use of lightweight emulators and simulators to do that same job. So right from the development early stages, you can make use of simulators or emulators to do your initial testing, followed by the real devices in the later stages. There are certain types of tests that can be performed on the mobile emulator and simulator, but not all types of tests. So you need to identify those particular tests which can your emulator and simulator can support and then decide on what things will be pushed to the real devices. Again, considering your cost factor, you will not be pushing everything to the real devices and trying to you know, minimize your effort and executions to the real devices to the limited execution or testing. Now, further to add, the test strategy may consider the challenge posed by the large number of different devices by adopting one of the following approaches. Now that we have been talking that the constraint is that you cannot really afford all the uh, real devices types and there can be different variants of each of the model. So why? what can we do in order to overcome such challenges? Because at the same time, we do agree the more you test in the real devices, it can be definitely more feasible and reliable product or as an app to be released into the market. So how you can overcome by doing different approaches. So here are the uh, options. Number one, single platform approach. You start with one single platform and reduce the number of devices which are required to test and then publish it. If you see a great uh, response from people, you can definitely uh, move on to the other platforms as well and then promote your work. So here we say reduce the scope to a single type of device, one OS version and one carrier and one network type. So all the legends will be considered for one particular segment and let's try testing that for one or two you know, devices and that could be you know, uh, within your budget as well and can definitely target the most common device available in the country. So you can definitely have the survey information, a lot of other data supporting this to decide on which single platform approach should I go for. Multi-platform approach, which can help you to reduce the scope to representative selection of device and OS used by majority of customer in the target market based on mobile traffic or other analytical data. Now, a lot of things can be supporting you with this. 
maybe you can get it from the e-commerce website that what kind of models are being most ordered by your place by the customer on your site and maybe there are certain mobile uh, you know standard companies which do provide you the details that what kind of consumption is made on different models what kind of network providers are there how how people make use of these network connectivity how many of our 4g user how many of our 2g users and those all things also finally uh, if you really have a great budget you can go for the third one which is maximum coverage approach which covers all the version devices manufacturers carriers and network types this is basically exhaustive testing which will usually not be economically viable especially when considering the multitude of devices and os versions on the market which definitely requires a huge budget to perform such things finally coming to the end the test strategy may consider the challenge posed by the non availability of devices networks or real life conditions by using external resources such as remote device access service this is a way to access devices over the web which are not otherwise owned for example maybe you know you're talking about certain devices which are still in development and not yet released into the market and you want to target such devices to be tested with your app now that's where i think we can definitely make use of some of the remote device access services where people provide you the cloud instance and cloud device access where you can actually install your app and have a look on such things to see that when this particular model will be released people will be having the same convenience of using your app when they purchase such devices again you can decide what exactly you can do with those devices whether you want to go for it or not cloud testing services which is another option this is a way to access a huge group of volunteer and their devices you can call up for a particular get together and maybe you know some quickies to be given to them and ask them to quickly install this app and have uh, this app being tested with one particular or multiple other transactions being performed by them for example asking them to use it and this crowd testing can be voluntarily asked for people to come and join you may not have really a cost involved but yeah you may offer a tea or, or cup of coffee um, maybe you know a lunch and people will definitely be joining you for participating in this crowd testing approach personal networks such as friends and colleagues this makes use of one's own private social network which will also give you a great uh, you know in experience of testing the app in without any kind of cost or without affording a real device so you can definitely spread this app among your friends and uh, colleagues to ask them to use on their specific devices to do the same job bug hunting this is a gamified testing event using volunteers from the company or from the general public you can have a kind of you know uh, initiative just like the facebook instagram whatsapp that you know we have a bug hunting reward or a bounty on that if you can really find some bugs in our apps we will be rewarding you with certain dollars of bill and other things right then people really feel encouraged as a competition or maybe as a participating event and they can really come up with great observations and help you to find a lot of bugs in fact at the same time they'll be using the app thoroughly can certainly send you feedbacks and your app will be tested on different devices so this is where we can definitely come up with a lot of approaches to be put together considering the challenges considering the risk considering all other availability of the devices and many other factors put together to create a unique and you know great strategy which you really need for all the mobile apps to be available so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning